my name is Kazi Mahir Ashab and the topic that I'm going to present today is the emergence of newspapers in Bangla. Before I start with my presentation, I would like to point out why exactly that I have selected this topic. First, to understand the history of newspapers in Bangla. Second, to know about the process of how they were printed. And lastly, how newspapers shaped national movements and structured the written language of the country from the times of the British Raj. So I will start with a small story. A teacher of a small village was so overwhelmed by the atrocities of the landowners or zamindars of colonial India that he decided to write something in protest. A former employee of a British owned indigo production house, he was a first hand witness of the cruelties against the workers who gave their sweat and blood to only be further exploited by the zamindars and the British Raj. With the help of a loan and his savings, he founded his own publication house in Komor Kuchtia in 1863 as an act of revolution against this oppression. Kangal Horinath Mojumdar could thus be called the first investigative reporter of the subcontinent with Gram Bartha Prakashika, a Bangla weekly that aimed to generate public awareness regarding the wealth tyranny of those in power. While Grambartha Prokashika can be heralded as the first Bangla language newspaper that directly attacked the imperialists and the zamindars, it was far from being the first newspaper or even the first Bangla newspaper in the subcontinent. So my argument is how exactly then did the ordinary people get the information that the people of today consider their right by law. So first we need to understand how news was spread. Back then, the dissemination of information was a privilege solely reserved by the ruling class. Only the news deemed most important would be streamed down to the masses through the help of a messenger and a drum. Ordinary people mostly depended on hearsay and rumors to ironically get a truer picture of the political decisions being taken on their behalf by the sovereign powers of the state. A little bit of history when it all started. In undivided India, the press began in Kolkata in 1780 to satisfy the needs of the colonials and their cohorts. By the turn of the century, there were a dozen or so periodicals with several hundred subscribers among the European residents of India. The first journal, Hikis Bengal Gazette, began publication in 1780 and was owned by the Irishman James Augustus Hickey who came to India as a sergeant's mate. According to Partho Chatterjee's book, The Black Hole of the Empire, the weekly English language gazette initially started as a journal where readers could get information on various commodity prices in the Kolkata markets, sales and auctions, the arrival and departure of ships as well as fires, thefts and accidents in the city. It was only when he tried to live in his weekly by printing news about the goings on of the senior officials of the East India Company that he got into trouble with the government. He then went on to incur the wrath of the British Empire by printing stories of bestiality and other vile crimes by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Elijah Impey and the Governor General Hastings. The Story of Bangla Newspapers while it's true that the English newspapers inspired the birth of Bangla newspapers in the region, the difference lied in the intrinsic goals of the Bangla newspapers. English newspapers in Kolkata were a means of entertainment and profit whereas Bangla newspapers aimed for cultural enhancement and to inform and educate the privileged class. The Bangla alphabet did not exist for print in any publication house until 1778. The Sri Rampur Missionary Press first invented a method through which they created a frame for the Bangla alphabet and formed the different letters by using molten iron. This initiative saw the birth of Bangla publications in the region. With the introduction of Bangla alphabets in print, more and more locals of the region began to publish their own newspapers. This was a way of expressing their love for their native land while also providing a voice that was uniquely indigenous to the native populace of the region. The first Bangla language newspaper, Bengal Gazette and Shamachar Dorpon, published in 1818, 
were weeklies that were basically published for the entertainment of the elite class of Kolkata. Within the span of five years, a tide of Bangla language newspapers swept the nation. So let's look at some of the popular ones back then. The year 1818 marks the beginning of Bengali journalism. Shamachar Dorpon was the first newspaper in Bengali language. It was published by Sri Rampur Mission Press on May 23, 1818. Started by missionaries Carey and Marshman, it began as a monthly but soon converted into a weekly. It carried both Indian and foreign new news. It became bilingual in 1829, carrying Bengali and English newspapers in parallel columns. After surviving a number of crises, it closed down in 1852. Dick Darshan was also published in 1818. In 1821, a remarkable Bengali journal, Shangbat Comedy, was published under the patronage of Ram Mohan Roy, but it did not survive for long. Shangbat Prabhakar was the first Bengali daily newspaper published in 1839, patronized by Ishwar Chandra Gupta. It was followed by Tattva Vidhini, published by Akhya Kumar Dotto in 1843. The other Bengali journals during this time were Shamachar Chondrika, Bangodud, Shangbad Prabhakar, Vividhartha Shangroho, Mashik Patro, and Shamprakash. The first weekly within the territory of today's Bangladesh, Rangpur Bartha Baho, was published in 1847 from Rangpur, and the first weekly from Dhaka. Dhaka News was published in 1856. The long-lasting Dhaka Prakash was first published in 1861 and Dhaka Darpon in 1863. So let's know a little bit about the printing process. The news publications of the 19th century were printed in hand-driven press machines. The alphabets would be arranged in a frame and then printed on paper. It would take hours for the ink to dry and probably a day to print a small publication. Four workers were required to print a single page. One person would arrange the alphabets in the correct form in a dais. Another would place single pages on the dais and apply pressure on the press machine to print the letters. Another person would dry the pages after they were ready while someone else would bind them to form a whole publication. As you can see I have attached a picture of a printing block over here. It's difficult to even imagine such an artist process in our digital age. My presentation would be incomplete if I do not talk about the significance of Bangla newspapers in uplifting political agendas. The national conscience was so influenced by the Indian rebellion of 1857 that 87 vernacular newspapers were published from then till 1870. Kangal Horinath Mojumdar's Gram Bartha Prakashika is probably the most noteworthy amongst all of them for its fearless presentation of information to the ordinary people. For the first time, a newspaper that consisted of soft news segments like literature, poetry and philosophy alongside hard news was printed for ordinary people instead of the elites or the British government. Interestingly, Mir Musharraf Hossein the first novelist to emerge from the Muslim society of Bengal, who penned the famous novel Bishad Shindu, began his literary career at Gram Bartha Prakashika as a correspondent. In the beginning of the 20th century, two major political parties, National Congress and Muslim League, were formed. This led to the publication of newspapers based on political ideologies replacing the core need for preserving empirical and social values practiced by vernacular newspapers of the 19th century. The partition of Bangla, the First World War and the emergence of socialism in the Soviet Union influenced the news publications of the region. Celebrated poet Nozul Islam and Muzaffar Ahmed published the daily Novojuk which presented a reflection of socialist ideologies along with the demand for an independent India. When Shere Bangla A.K. Fosdul Haq became the Prime Minister of Bengal in 1935, he noticed that he was lagging behind in the political front as he didn't have any newspaper that could back his political career. With the help of Maulana Akram Khan who served as the editor, he published the Azad in 1936 which, aimed, which helped him gain a firm standing and quick following amongst the people. 
The Azad quickly superseded the popularity of other dailies amongst readers because of its courageous editorials and practice of modern journalism. Conclusion A newspaper is like a moving image, an image that gives you a picture of the different events, incidents and goings on of every part of the country in just a single page. While one person living in one end of Bangladesh might never have seen someone from the other end, they feel connected and can relate to each other through newspapers. The nationalist movements of the country grew and spread in a similar manner thanks to the endless efforts of the country's newspapers, be it during the Great India Partition, the language movement in 1952 or our Liberation War in 1971. Thank you for listening to me.